All right, let's go over how this is coded. So we start off with our three libraries here. We have Excel, Excel stepper.h, RTC lib.h, and wire.h. So we have the Excel stepper library drives the stepper motors uh, with these functions. And RTC lib um, interfaces with the PCF8523 real-time clock. And then we have the ITC protocol or I2C protocol. So we declare two motors, type one, uh, based on the Excel stepper protocol. Pin two is step, uh, just step, uh, just to move it one step. And then pin three is in direction, and then it's the uh, same six and seven on the hour motor. So we declare uh, max speeds of both the motors uh, for homing. So in order to, to get an accurate uh, baseline to set the clock, and also so you don't have to set it by hand by moving the motors, which we don't want to do, um, we have to home it. And it's the same process that a CNC machine would use to home. So we have on our home here, it moves the hour motor up until the feedback from pin alpha zero reaches 680, which is just an arbitrary number. I could have used the digital pin high or low. I just soldered it to the analog pins, um, and I didn't set it to solder it to the digital pins. So I just moved it to an arbitrary number, negative 30,000, just to get it to move. I want it to move until it will. it's guaranteed to hit the switch. I could probably set a, a lower number in there, but it's okay. It'll keep running until it hits uh, less than 680. It does the same with the minute home uh, function here. So this uh, while loop will move until or move the motor until the minute minute uh, home switch uh, is hit. Then I got to move the clock to baseline. So I moved it to 12 o'clock. Um, that's my baseline. So zero 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 zero. If you're reading it as a digital clock, and that comes in handy later. So this function here moves just slews the motor to um, the both motors to 950 and 915 respectively so that in, in uh, reality they move uh, indicate 12 o'clock and this right here is just for backlash because I want I want uh, every step on the hour motor to not be wasted so I move it uh, just 50 steps which is the amount of backlash which is quite a bit but since it's not going to be touched or handled it doesn't it doesn't matter now on our continuous loop here, we set our speed slower because we want more precise control of the motors and don't want them to skip steps. I extract, this is uh, the call function to, extra, to uh, dump the time into delta tango here. I extract the hours, minutes, and seconds uh, from the real time clock. This is just for debugging purposes. So what I have here, because uh, I noticed when I would use a real-time clock, I get a bunch of arbitrary numbers if I was trying to pull data too fast. So this if loop uh, kind of filters out the bad numbers that I don't want. So I don't want any numbers greater than or equal to 60. I don't want any numbers greater to or equal than 23 because it goes zero to the time goes zero to 23, zero to 59 for the minutes, and zero to 59 for the seconds. So what I do here is I have a bunch of uh, if statements. I could have used cases, but I was being lazy. So this, um, these three up here are isolate the the minutes out from what or the position of the minutes from the hour. So since each each rotation or each hour is one third of a revolution, I have to I, I have to uh, uh, isolate that in three different uh, arcs of my circle. So there are 80 steps per minute. So I take my minute pause, which was set from the... So I take my minute position and then multiply it by 80 from minute set. So minute set is the minutes. Minute pause is what's going to move the motors to uh, the position later. And then I have also from... I get the seconds, so I add 1.3 steps because there's 1.3 steps per second. Uh, and I dump that into minute pause. So I add the seconds to the minutes and then I have my position. It does the same with these other functions just with different uh, in different areas of the arc. Now in hours I, I, I extract the hours 
and move the cubes accordingly. So each move, each ro uh, quarter rotation of a cube is 430 steps. If it was on 12 o'clock, I'd leave it at zero, and then I add 430 if it's three, eight, add eight, uh, another 430 if it's six, or add another 430 if it's nine. Now, there are 14,400 steps per full revolution of the circle, so I want to change the hours every three hours. So, on the when it reaches 14,399, uh, or gets greater than that, I miss two steps, but that's okay because it, uh, in the worst case scenario, that's okay because it's it's moving the position in real time. So. This right here uh, resets the minutes and the hour position just so it doesn't move. If my hour position equals 17 is uh, greater than or equal to 1720, that's when I reset the hour position but because that is when it would equal zero or be one another rotation. This is for debugging purposes. This loop here moves the motors in real time. So as I keep extracting these values from the real time clock, I'm moving it to the values on the real time clock. It doesn't matter if I put a delay in here for X number of seconds, it'll always extract the uh, data from the real time clock and move the hours accordingly. On the right here, we have what is uh, th this code extracts the time from my computer and dumps it into the um, and dumps it into the real time clock when I up when I go to upload. So this is how I set it. This line right here is specifically what does that. This block of code is an example code that comes with uh, rtc.lib or rtclib.h. But all I want is this. So that's, that concludes the how it's coded. Let's uh, watch it in real time. 